Welcome to another great episode of American Rifleman Television. While the USM-14 may have had a short service window as the prime infantry rifle, it continues to serve U.S. military troops today. The semi-automatic only version of that gun, the Springfield Armory M1A, is still active on firing lines and it matches all over the country. There are more armed citizens in this nation carrying concealed than ever before. And this week, Joe Kurtenbach looks at the latest holsters from Crossbreed. For I have this old gun, we'll look at one of the rarer U.S. military model 1911s, and that's the model of 1911 U.S. Army as made by the U.S. National Armory at Springfield, Massachusetts. But for now, let's focus on the M14 and the M1A. One of the best friends that NRA has had over the past couple of decades has been Springfield Armory because this is a company that at its roots was all about a gun designed for NRA high power rifle competition and that gun of course is the M1A. And when you would go out to Camp Perry when the national matches were held there, Springfield Armory always had a big booth. and there, My first memory of walking in there was there was just a rack of M1A rifles. I wanted every one of them. And that's because I knew that when you weren't shooting a reduced course, once you were shooting 600 or 1,000 yards, in that era, the M1A was the king of the 1,000-yard line. Crossbreed Holsters has a well-earned reputation among armed citizens for comfort and concealment thanks to their hybrid holster designs, which blend horsehide or cowhide leather backers with hand-molded Kydex pockets, which provide sure retention. In fact, it's pretty safe to say that Crossbreed's sure tuck holster design, really the granddaddy of the winged inside the waistband holsters, it's one of the most recognizable and also the most copied holsters out there. The U.S. model of 1911 was, of course, adopted in 1911, but just three years later, in 1914, the U.S. Springfield Armory went into production. So in 1911, the United States Army officially adopts John Browning's design, the Colt M1911. and. Uh, Colt receives the contract, the military contract, for these guns, but there's provision within that contract that Colt needs to provide the schematics to the national arsenal at Springfield Armory so that Springfield can also produce these guns. The reason for this is the U.S. government doesn't want to run the risk of putting all of its handgun production solely into one manufacturer. 